Okay, happy Good Friday, everyone. I just had to make this quick introduction to this video because I was just watching another YouTuber. Her name is Crime Catalyst, and I've linked to her video below I was just watching, and she sent me off on a mission to go dig through some archives. Videos I've made years ago about Nicole Kessinger's previous arrest history. It took a lot of work and you guys who have been riding with me for years know that I got kicked out of the YouTube partner program in 2022. That was rough. And in order to get back in, they made me jump through hoops. And one of those hoops meant I had to delete like over a thousand videos. So I archived them on Spotify video, some are on Patreon, most are on Spotify video, but it doesn't always work right. Anyway, I went over there and I dug up a couple of old videos where I explain two arrests of Nicole Kessinger. So this video that inspired me to do so is titled Nicole Kessinger before Chris Watts. And I'm just watching it and I heard her mention that she remembered when I went through and looked up and requested, FOIA'd, all this stuff to get Nicole Kessinger's history. So I thought, let me go find those videos. Thank God I found two of them that detail the official police records of Nicole's previous arrest. Now she was pretty young and only two arrests are confirmed, but you will hear me mention in the second video coming up that one of them was her second offense. So we are missing technically, I believe, in my opinion, her very first offense. You're going to see when Nicole was arrested, you're going to see it's Nicole. She has a various spellings of her name, the common way of spelling Nicole and a lot of other ways, even though that's not her name anymore anyway. But I was able to match it up with her date of birth. We know it's her. And even one of these places sent me her 2007 mugshot. So we know it's her. You'll hear me laughing about one of the incidents. Well, her first arrest that's on paper I think she really got away with the very first one and you'll see why. The first arrest that is in the police records is with Arapahoe County out of Colorado. It was December 9th, 2006. Unfortunately, they did not have a booking photo. So Nicole would have been around 18. She was arrested a second time. The Aurora Police Department out of Colorado provided me with her booking photo and all the details about her arrest when she was 19 years old. So that's what I go over next when she's sound like a terror on wheels. She forced a cop to use his baton to like break a window to get into an apartment because Kessinger wouldn't allow the people there to let the cop in. She wouldn't allow the cop to you know, come inside. And these are police records. These are not my opinions. You will see everything from official police records that I read out loud. And I'm even laughing in some of them because one guy seems so high. He's just like staring at the cop and he's like smiling. <laughs> that part cracked me up. Anyway, um, forgive my voice in these earlier videos coming up. I mean, I'm still learning. I learn now how to throw my voice and try and project and try and lose any um, raspy, uh, what do you call it, vocal fry or whatever. It's taken time over the years and I'm still working on it, but forgive my voice in these coming up. But yeah, these are the videos and it took a lot of time to request all this stuff from police. It took time to put these videos together, to verify the record, so you will hear me go over only two of Nicole Kessinger's arrests. I believe they were regarding like drinking. There was a noise complaint. Kessinger made it worse by not opening the door for police. You'll hear me talk about the other arrest. Now, if you go over and watch Crime Catalyst, she details another incident. And I've seen people talk about the same incident because I think it was actually someone who had commented on one of my really old videos from years ago, which isn't on YouTube anymore. But anyway, people screenshotted that comment because it was from some person who allegedly walked in on Nicole and a guy in a compromising position. Now, this is all alleged because this is just from a comment this isn't from any police report. But some melee happened and the allegations are that Nicole actually, you know, weapon. <laughs> this is one of my favorites from my uh, parents and grandparents. I don't know who this came from, but you can imagine what's in here. One side is a fork and the other side is what you usually use with a fork. 
Nicole used some type of weapon, allegedly, to harm someone in the back. That's the rumors, those are the allegations. So I always wonder, the age I believe might line up. I would have to find that screenshot. If that allegedly took place when she was around 17 or so, it would line up with what I'm seeing now, putting everything together. This arrest on record from December 9th, 2006, when she was 18, and it says second offense. How come I could never find that first offense unless I didn't go to the right county? I mean, they helped me out. You'll see that coming up, the cops helped me out. They helped me find, you know, the Arapahoe County first arrest because the first one I found was literally her second offense, which was with the Aurora Police Department. And maybe I didn't check enough counties or police departments in Colorado, or as things are, they grow older. And if it truly was her first offense, you know, there's a way of things just kind of disappearing, things just going away. Technically, Nicole might have been in trouble at least three times. The first one, there's no record of. There's only internet rumors, so I'll call that speculation. That was from a comment, which, you know, you can go find the details of on Crime Catalyst, or if you're in the Facebook groups, you know what I'm talking about. But the second one, this one, which is on record, December 9th, 2006. She was 18, and then this one with the Aurora Police Department, 19-year-old, second time arrested, forcing cops to use his baton to enter this apartment. And then... The world got to know her. She wasn't arrested in 2018, but the world got to know Nicole Kessinger as Chris Watts's mistress. Time after time after time after time, it seems she's gotten away with a lot. And I'm not saying she should necessarily be nabbed for anything because I don't know if that rumor going around about her using a weapon on someone is true or not. That would be sad if it is true, if she really did get away with something like that and harm someone, maybe because technically that was her first offense and she got away with it i don't know but chance after chance after chance maybe she truly has learned her lesson now like i say but for the grace of god it could be any of us i don't want to be too hard or too soft on anyone but i did want to find these archive videos watch them coming up it takes a lot of time to do all this research part of it was good you know like what was that david said it was good for me that i was afflicted sometimes i think of that like it was good for me to get kicked out of youtube partner program thank god i got let back in but that's what forced me to go on camera and you know be more personable at least <laughs> as much as i am with my personality my introverted personality as much as i am here but watch these voice only coming up but you'll see at least all the records on the screen as crime catalyst was searching for thanks for inspiring me to do this so the history won't be lost i don't think anyone should be flogged of course for their past especially if they're repentant but we don't know if nicole is and I don't know. She just seems to get away with a lot and that's what a lot of people's issue is with her. So that's why I didn't want this to get lost. So watch all this coming up if you want to see her arrest history and then we'll have it here hopefully forever in my YouTube archives. Thanks for watching. See what's coming up. Subscribe to Plunder. Let's look at Nicole Lee Kessinger's arrest record as sent to me from the Aurora Police Department. They've already redacted what they feel they should out of this report, and I will redact even further personal information. I'm not going to dox her or anyone else, but I just want to describe what happened when Nicole, the infamous mistress of Christopher Watts, disobeyed the police and ended up in jail. After giving the details of her address and phone number, which I won't show even though this is from 2007, the police list Nicole Kessinger's place of birth as Colorado, her occupation as a bookkeeper back then for Beeline Acoustics, Buckley Quincy. She was a single American non-Hispanic woman who spoke English, 5 feet 2 inches tall, 105 pounds, slim build, fair complexion, left-handed. I noticed that previously in her, I want to call them interrogation videos, but her interviews, her infamous one video interview that was released during the time of the Watts tragedy. Brown eyes, brown hair, long. Her charges and offenses 
included disturbing the peace, loud, unusual noises, disorderly conduct, failure to obey order from a police officer, obstructing peace officer or fireman, unarmed, and resident. It looks like it took place during a time where she might have been hanging out with her stepbrother, I believe, and others. Let's take a look at the details. Nicole Kessinger was only 19 years of age, almost 20, when this incident took place on June 8th, 2007. But already the young future mistress of Chris Watts would have an unhealthy disrespect for law enforcement that ended up landing her in jail even when some of her acquaintances at the same incident didn't end up in jail. According to the Aurora Police Department, on June 8, 2007, Officer Chadley Roberts was working off-duty at the Victoria Crossing apartment complex. My hours were 2200 hours to 0200 hours. I was on routine foot patrol around 040 hours when I heard loud music and yelling. I was approximately 100 yards away in a parking lot on the other side of an adjacent apartment building. As I approached, I could see through the back sliding glass door that there was a party at this particular address. I went to the front door and knocked. The music was so loud that they did not hear me knocking. I then banged on the front door again. A few seconds later, the music was turned down a bit and I heard through the door someone say, shh, it's the effing cops. I then heard the deadbolt lock turn. I knocked again, but no one answered. I knocked a third time and said, open the door or you are going to make things worse. The music continued to play and I could hear people talking and laughing. On June 8th, 2007 was a Friday night. At 055 hours, I called for a patrol unit to assist me. While I waited for the cover officer, I stood approximately 25 yards to the west of the building so I could see if anyone attempted to leave through either the front or back door. As I stood there, the music and yelling continued. Officer Ponich arrived around 0100 hours. We walked to the back sliding door. The vertical blinds were pulled open and we could see directly into the apartment. As we walked up to the door, the parties inside the apartment saw us standing there. A male, later identified as JP, I'll call him, was sitting at the kitchen table with two other males and a female who appeared to be much younger. There were also two females and another male standing in the kitchen. I observed a bottle of whiskey and a shot glass on the counter, which the male quickly picked up and hid. The male was also smoking something, but I could not see what he was holding. It appeared to be marijuana, not a cigarette. I told JP to open the door so we could talk. He just looked at us and smiled. <laughs> I'm just thinking of someone looking at the cop, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> oh, he just looked at us and smiled. That's pretty funny, someone just staring at a cop, probably high out of his mind and smiling. <laughs> and smiling at the cop. Again, I told him to open the door. He stood up and asked, why? I explained that I am giving him a lawful order to open the door because the music is still loud and I can see alcohol and no one looks old enough to be drinking. JP then walked over to the TV and turned the music off but still refused to open the door. I told him if he does not open the door, I will break the glass. At that point, he asked if we had a warrant. I explained that we did not need one and he needs to open the door immediately or he will go to jail. I could hear everyone inside the apartment and the two males who were sitting at the table continually told JP to open the door. Those males were later identified as NH and RK. So the RK is the one I believe is related to Nicole Kessinger, even though his last name isn't Kessinger. He shares the last name of Nicole's mom. And by the way, all of this started, it seems, by another citizen calling police and making a noise complaint. So 
Sounds like rowdy kids at a house party. It could happen to anyone, of course, but the trouble started when they refused to comply with these police officers. At one point, I told JP to listen. I told JP to listen to his friends and open the door, but he refused to open the door. He then walked up and tried to close the vertical blinds. At that point, I swung my baton with medium force, striking the glass door, hoping to get JP's attention so he would open the door. He stepped back and stood there. The entire time we were standing there, a female, later identified as Nicole Kessinger, was telling him not to open the door. At one point, JP looked as if he was going to come outside, but then Kessinger grabbed his arm and told him not to to open the door. I gave JP several more lawful orders to open the door, but he refused to comply. At that point, I made the decision to bust the glass door. I was concerned for the safety of the other females who were inside the apartment. There was underage drinking, what I believe to be drug use, and the unknown of how many other people might be in the apartment and what their ages were. As soon as I busted the glass, a strong odor of marijuana came through the door. When the glass busted, the party started running towards the back of the apartment. I immediately drew my weapon and ordered everyone outside. JP and Kessinger were immediately searched and placed into custody. The other parties were brought out, searched, and identified. The female who was originally sitting at the table was identified as redacted. She admitted she was only blank years old. I asked her how much she had to drink and she stated two to three shots a few hours earlier. I asked her about the marijuana and she said she did not smoke any of it. I asked her who did, but she stated she did not know. As I spoke with her, I observed a strong odor of a consumed alcoholic beverage on her breath. I then identified the male who was standing in the kitchen as AC. He admitted that he had three or four shots of whiskey. I also observed an odor of consumed alcoholic beverage on his breath. I then contacted PS. She was angry and very uncooperative. She stated she had not had anything to drink all night. When I asked her about the marijuana, she stated she had not smoked any. She was not issued a summons and released to her mother. I then contacted H and K. Both parties were very cooperative and a determination was made that they had not been drinking. I asked Kay about the alcohol and who brought it. He said that he thought it was already at the apartment when they arrived. I then asked him about the marijuana. He stated he doesn't do drugs and he stated he did not know who exactly was smoking. Both H and K were released from the scene. C was issued a summons for underage consumption and released from the scene. Blank was also issued a summons for underage consumption and released to her parents. Kessinger and JP were taken to APD jail and bonded on failure to obey, disturbing the peace and obstruction. At jail, Kessinger made the voluntary statement, quote, the alcohol and marijuana were brought there. They weren't ours. While JP was waiting to be processed, he made the statement to me, quote, what you did was unnecessary. No wonder people call cops pigs. So the address listed for Kessinger is the same address it appears where the party was held. Even though Nicole claims that the alcohol and marijuana wasn't hers, it may have been, it may have been someone else she lived with. It may have been that someone else brought the substances to Nicole's place. Of course, it sounds like a minor incident that turned major when it didn't have to. I mean, who hasn't partied as a teenager, smoked some weed, and drank alcohol? I don't fault Nicole Kessinger for being a typical teenager. After all, marijuana is legal in many states these days, including Colorado. So yes, this was 14 years ago. Laws were different. But the point that gets me is where it escalated. And it didn't have to escalate to this great of a degree. Someone could have been harmed. They had 
Nicole especially, and JP. It sounded like from this police report, Nicole was the ringleader. She had such a lack of respect for authority. Nicole wouldn't even open the door for the police officers. And that's what's scary to the point where the police officer ended up drawing his weapon. Firstly, the officer ended up drawing his baton. None of this had to go down this way. Nicole Kessinger was probably a frightened 19-year-old. There obviously was the presence, according to this police report, of marijuana, alcohol, and he even mentions drugs, but he doesn't specify which ones. His suspicions in this police report, if Nicole had those in her possession, if it was her apartment, and if she was really afraid of providing such substances to underage parties at the party, I can see why she might have freaked out. But when a police officer comes to your door and demands that you open the door because of a noise complaint, most of us would do what we likely have done as teenagers and say, yes, officer, I am sorry, turn down the music and comply with the law. However, I'm not sure what state of mind she was in. It sounds like an impaired state of mind. It says right here, a female later identified as Nicole Kessinger was telling JP not to open the door. The police report says at one point JP looked as if he was going to come outside, but then Kessinger grabbed his arm and told him not to open the door. The officer gave JP several more lawful orders to open the door, but he refused to comply. At that point, that's when the officer made the decision to literally bust the glass door. Because this officer was concerned for the safety of other females inside the apartment, the underage drinking, and what he believed to be, quote, drug use. And unknown about how many people were in the apartment and what their ages might be. It's important to look at a person's history, of course, not for them to be condemned by it, but to understand them. By looking at this older police report, which Kessinger got out of, she made it through these charges and I believe there was some type of treatment plan ordered and what have you, but it shows a pattern. I'm not sure where her lack of respect for police came from as a 19 year old, but it's pretty ballsy to me to disobey a police officer so many times that he's forced to pull out his baton and break a glass window and also at the point where he drew his weapon when an officer has to draw their weapon after giving so many orders to comply it's a scary situation it amps up the danger everyone else was able to escape jail that night except for nicole kessinger and jp the guy she kept encouraging to not comply with officers again the police officer wrote as soon as i busted the glass there was a strong odor of marijuana that came through the door when the glass busted the party started running towards the back of the apartment i immediately drew my weapon and ordered everyone outside and that's when jp and kessinger were immediately searched and placed into custody and all the other parties were brought out well, this whole scenario, you can just imagine all these other kids saying, open the door, open the door, open the, open the door. And then this JP kid smiling and eventually thinking about complying, but Nicole continuing to urge him not to comply to the point where he has to break down the glass door. People inside start running and the officer draws his weapon. That's a dangerous place to be. Imagine how many cases we've seen where people who are running away from police who have their weapons drawn, they get shot in the melee. Thankfully, it sounds like no one got hurt, but a simple stepping outside or opening the door could have prevented this. A lot of this danger, in my opinion. So my point is, if this is how Nicole Kessinger reacted to police when she was 19 and maybe this is some of the stuff that Chris Watts alluded to when he said you know she's been through a lot in her life and I know she had allegedly been through an abusive relationship I know there was a lot we don't know but it makes me wonder just 11 years later in 2018 
what was Nicole's attitude then towards police and whether or not she had to be truthful with them or whether or not she had to comply with them. So when she's 19, she goes through this situation with police that she amped up and by the grace of God, no one seemingly got harmed. She went to jail, JP went to jail and they got out and apparently moved forward with her life until she met Chris Watts, got involved in an illicit relationship with him. I believe Nicole knew he was married and yeah, Chris Watts probably did give her a song and dance about him going to get divorced and all of that. And maybe Nicole Kessinger had no idea of Chris Watts' plans. So I'm not saying anything to that effect. Like she said, his cheese was sliding off his cracker way before he met me. But looking at this police report, it makes me wonder Nicole's attitude towards cops and whether or not Kessinger thought she could play police like a fiddle. By 2018, I wonder if Nicole had grown even more defiant of police. Once again, she found herself in a situation perhaps of her own making and didn't want to comply. In this old police report, we see what a bad influence she was on the JP guy. Even when JP wanted to do the right thing and step outside and speak with police officers, Kessinger encouraged him not to, to the point of grabbing his arm and telling him not to open the door. What did she think? Did Kessinger just think the police would just go away and say, okay, well, you guys won't open the door, but we got this noise complaint and I see, you know, there's underage drinking and partying going on, but you know, I'll just leave you guys alone. Maybe that's what she was hoping, but she was a bad influence on that guy. JP ended up in jail and Nicole Kessinger ended up in jail. Aurora Police Department in Colorado that night. So fast forward 11 years, she's in the situation with Chris Watts. What was her influence on him behind the scenes if we only knew the truth? Was she totally played by Chris Watts and he made her think, yeah, I'm leaving Shanann and you're going to be my wife and all of that? Perhaps. Perhaps that's true. Maybe she totally was played. And by the time she found out about the tragedy, she didn't come clean with police officers. Just like I don't really believe in my opinion she came clean with police officers here. You know, by the time she went to jail, Nicole said, quote, the alcohol and marijuana were brought there. They weren't ours. You know, isn't that the standard line that everyone issues? It's not mine, officer. And the guy saying what you did was unnecessary. No wonder people call cops pigs. Well, did Nicole share that same attitude? So by the time she found herself in trouble again in 2018, her thoughts this time weren't, uh-oh, I better avoid the cops at all costs. Like she didn't pull a Brian laundry and hire a lawyer and not speak at all. It appears Nicole Kessinger went on the offensive and said, let me go to cops first, spin my yarn with them, charm them, and try and get out of trouble. And it worked. And I tell you, at this point, I don't feel like Nicole Kessinger should be condemned for being a mistress. I don't think that's why many people dislike her. Of course, a lot of people do for that reason. Of course, being a mistress isn't right. However, I think a lot of people lobbed so much hate and vitriol at Nicole Kessinger because Nicole's lies seemed apparent and obvious deleting so many cell phone records and text messages, encouraging Chris Watts to do the same, being more of a bad influence on an already horrible person who committed a horrible crime, Watts. He didn't need any additional influences to be evil, to become the evil person that he is and committing those evil acts. However, Nicole Kessinger's lies were apparent and her shadiness was apparent. And by her not being honest from the get-go is what makes people try and fill in the blanks with all these wild theories and speculation, wondering how deep it goes. How much did she know? By Nicole Kessinger deleting so many text messages, pretending she didn't know Shanann was pregnant, attempting to cast herself as this Amber Fry type wanting a huge book deal. Being the maligned mistress is a plan that didn't work. If Nicole had told the truth and said, look, yeah, I knew Shanann was pregnant. I knew Chris Watts was married. I was being selfish. I just wanted him. I wanted him to divorce her. I wanted to move on and marry him and have a great life with him. I think she would have had more sympathy 
than she currently does not enjoy because people could see through the lies. If she had admitted that she didn't know any of that other stuff, which could very well be the truth, she may have had no idea what Watts was planning to do to his family. And if that's the God's honest truth, I think her reputation could have been a lot more salvaged. Look at Monica Lewinsky's reputation. Of course, it's not the same situation, but back then, Monica Lewinsky was vilified for being with Bill Clinton, for being Bill Clinton's mistress. Now, all these years later, she's a hero of sorts because she's coming to her own. And Monica Lewinsky is creating great works of art to show how she was scapegoated in that political situation. But Kessinger isn't Lewinsky and it's a whole different situation. An entire family lost their lives at the hands of Watts and unfortunately people will always kind of give Nicole Kessinger a side eye because of just how shady she appeared to be and manipulative. But again, like I say, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, so she can come out again. I believe at some point she can speak publicly or even write a book or tell her truthful situation. No one should be condemned for having an adulterous affair. She can admit she was scared. She lied to the cops. She omitted things. She pretended to be a lot more innocent. She pretended not to know about Shanann's pregnancy. She encouraged Chris Watts to delete things. She didn't tell cops about the secret calculator app. There were so many things I believe she did wrong or right, some might say, because she is not, because she's not in jail right now. And I'm not saying she should be. I know there are those theories out there where people believe Nicole had a lot more involvement in the planning or the aiding and abetting or what have you in the tragedy. I haven't seen proof to that effect, but if Nikki had nothing to do with that tragedy in terms of literally planning it or not warning anyone that it was going to happen or helping Watts afterwards or something, she could come out and admit it. But I think as long as the guilt tortures her, as long as she's obstinate, perhaps just as headstrong as she was as this 19 year old encouraging others not to open the door for police, not to comply with direct lawful orders. If that same obstinate spirit is in her, I'm not sure if she will ever have peace her entire life until she just gives it up tells the truth and then moves forward. Of course, I believe she deserves to move forward, get married, have babies, live a happy life. And if she had absolutely nothing to do with that Watts family tragedy, then just come out and tell the truth and move forward. Until she does, I think people will always look at her and wonder. But at least this police report gives us a little bit more insight into her character. Romans 5, 3 through 4, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And we know hope does not disappoint. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Plunder. Let's talk about the time Nicole Kessinger was arrested and it was listed as her second offense. Previously, we took a look at the arrest record of Chris Watts' mistress, Nicole Kessinger, in the video titled, Arrests, Nicole Kessinger's Three Old Charges, Chris Watts' 5'1", 108-pound X, Obstruct Police Disobedience was one of the charges. I've linked to that video below in case you want to watch that to get more details. Back then, it was Nicole's call to the North Glen Police Department days before Watts' crime that led me to dig into her arrest records. That's when I found the different names used. It was through the CBI, and you can see the spelling of her names. White female, 5 feet 1 inches tall, 108 pounds back then, eyes brown, hair brown. And I was focused on North Glen at that point, but I got some help. I could see clearly here that it was actually the Aurora Police Department Agency that provided this record when Nicole was only 18. It was less than one month prior to her 19th birthday when Nicole was arrested on June 8, 2007 with three charges including obstruction. However, I just learned that that was not her first run-in with the law. The listings of obstruct police disobedience, obstruct police 
They were all misdemeanors. Thankfully, this helpful police record supervisor at the North Glen Police Department told me that he did not see a report for Kessinger in North Glen, but he did see a case out of Aurora, and that was the June 8th, 2007 arrest with those three charges I just showed you that I've dug more into, and I'm still awaiting those details, but thanks to LexisNexis, I found a prior arrest, and this is out of Arapahoe County. So the city of Aurora in Colorado is located in Arapahoe. It's a home rule municipality located in Arapahoe, Adams, and Douglas counties, Colorado. Aurora lies immediately to the east of Denver. Beyond that June 8, 2007 arrest, I just turned up records for a December 9, 2006 arrest record. It's funny how they come in dribs and drabs, but these are all public records that anyone can access. It turns out on December 9, 2006, Nicole was arrested for being a minor in possession or consumption of alcohol. Indeed, Nikki would have only been 18 years of age again at that point. You can see there the people of the state of Colorado versus Kessinger Nicole Lee. You can see the case number. The date filed was December 13th, 2006. They have the judge's information. The agency this time is the Centennial Police Department out of Colorado. And the litigant is Kessinger Nicole Lee. And it is her, white female, and her aliases listed are just the normal spelling of her name prior to her alleged name change. Under Colorado law, a minor in possession or consumption of alcohol is a Colorado revised statute, which is punishable by a fine up to $250 for a first conviction, $500 for a second conviction, and jailable class two misdemeanor for third and subsequent convictions. So you see here, it's weird that it's listed as her second offense. I'm wondering where's the first offense? We can see her charges. One count on December 9th, 2006. Her main charge is alcohol, underage, possession or consumption, second offense. Unclassified offense. Her blood alcohol content was zero. So that was December 9th. 2006. It looks like she pled guilty on February 6, 2007. The case was closed by April 4, 2007. It has another count there, count one again, which is just really a repeat the status lesser included. Again, blood alcohol content of zero. So I'm not sure how she got caught up with alcohol or in this instance, but apparently she was underage. It's pretty interesting to me that her, during her arraignment, they did reach a status disposition reach, which means they kind of reached an agreement. And by the time her status hearing was held on April 4th, 2007, everything was kind of wrapped up neatly in a bow because there was an alcohol evaluation ordered for Nikki. So by the time September 6, 2007 rolled around, that hearing, that review hearing was vacated. They must not have needed it, apparently. Nikki was able to pay $121 and just kind of put this behind her. We can see there the summons and complaint was filed December 13th, 2006. We can also see by February 6, 2007, the alcohol evaluation was ordered and by April 4th, 2007, the case was closed. Again, a status disposition means that the judge reached a decision and a substance abuse evaluation helps to measure a person's level of addiction. I think it's pretty interesting that we don't see a first offense here. This whole thing has me wondering why Nikki was going through such a hard time at such a young age. What was troubling Nikki 
at such a young age. You know, her parents were divorced when Nikki and her sister were Bella and Cece Watts' ages, as Kessinger told Kevin Kobach. I know that divorce can have a big impact upon a person. Also, I've been thinking about Zav Girl and her impromptu interview with a woman who noticed Nikki's flirty ways with married men at a Colorado gym. Now, Nikki eschewed flirting with the hot single guy, according to the woman. I'll link to it below. It's a good interview. Kessinger is an interesting study in what could go wrong in a person's life or their way of thinking when attempting to perhaps right the wrongs of their past. Again, no judgment. I mean, this could be any one of us, but for the grace of God, I keep saying I've never been arrested. You know, it could be any one of us. But with all this hubbub about whether Kessinger is actually being investigated or will be arrested again in the future, it's fascinating to look at her past. And the questions still remain. Has Chris Watts rolled on Nikki? Will she ever write a book? I hope so. It would help her really exercise her demons of the past. To me, it would be cathartic. Obviously, something was troubling her. Psalm 14.1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. All this digging has me really feeling compassion for Nikki, but still just wanting to know the truth wanting to know which wild rumors are going to turn into additional police records for Kessinger, if any at all. And I really wish she would come out and tell her truth. I hope she is healed. What is it that made Nikki perhaps turn to substances to try and heal pain and maybe even turn to married men? Unlike her other charges of her past, I don't think she'll simply be able to just pay some fines and put these behind her until she heals what's at the core of her being. Thanks for watching. Have you checked your bank accounts? That's what nothing else can do because I don't have access through here. Let's go check those and see if she pulled any cash out or uh, if there's any strange charges or anything. Okay. Can you log? I can't log in because she, she, she does all the finances. Okay. So I, d I know her password. I just don't have her user ID. I'm not sure what she would have used that way. Sorry, my phone's just blowing up right now. No, you're fine. Um, who do you guys bank through? USAA and Chase. Can you call them to see if yep. there's any activity? Any of or anything? And then the suitcases that she came home this morning with, which ones were those? Were they, were that the black one that's sitting right there. Not the one in the bedroom? Mm mm. That was from the last trip, we, or from when we just got back a few days ago from North Carolina. She went to Arizona like two days later. That was when we just got put back down in the in the basement. You guys don't have any stockpiles of cash or anything in the house that she, she would have had. If she needed cash, she needed to go to the bank to get it. If, if there is, I would not know about it. I mean, if there was, I didn't know. You know how much cash she usually carries with her? It's usually not, maybe like a hundred. 